Hello! Today's video is sponsored by the global technology company Lenovo. Can you believe it? I can't. My first laptop many many years ago was actually a Lenovo, so it's a little surreal for me. But anyway, they are known for top computers and awesome tech. But did you know that they also offer excellent tablets? I have taken my relaxation and ASMR experience to the next level with their Lenovo Tab Extreme. I also have the optional keyboard with mine, which I find very useful. While I'm curled up in bed snuggling my buddy Trisket, I can now enjoy my ASMR like a queen with its large 14.5 inch screen of high resolution visuals, showing me all those beautiful details. Reading while listening to my favorite ASMR ambience has never been more immersive, with their premium surround sound JBL speakers tuned with Dolby Atmos. Staring at my bright phone for 30 minutes, burning that searing white light into my brain, and falling not so gently to sleep with an eye strain headache isn't ideal, but Lenovo tablets tuned displays reduce blue light emission, which lets you doze off into dreamland. Plus, its anti-flickering and low light tech makes sure you're not kept awake by an overly bright screen. One of the most useful parts for me is the fact that it's self-standing. I can contort myself into whatever weird but comfortable position I want to while I relax without sacrificing one of my hands to hold my phone up. And with its long-lasting battery, I can enjoy one of my favorite pastimes, streaming a three-hour video essay on YouTube while playing cozy games on the PS5 or Switch or whichever, and it's never been easier. So, if you'd like to upgrade your relaxation game, visit lenovo.com slash tablets to get yourself a Lenovo Tab Extreme. And with that, thank you so much to Lenovo for sponsoring this video, and let's get on to do, 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 do it. Greetings, fellow truth seeker and cryptid enthusiast. As you well know, cryptids are animals that cryptozoologists believe may exist somewhere in the wild, but whose present existence is disputed or unsubstantiated by science. Popular examples being Yeti, Chupacabra, the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, etc. After months of getting to know you online through our subreddit, it is truly a delight to finally meet you in person. As you know, I am Loch Ness Mama 23 the owner of said subreddit. But offline, I am known as the High Commander of Cryptozoology Studies and the current keeper of the Cryptid Chronicles. This is my main mod, who you may know as Sasquatch756, with two S's. two S's, who is also our Chief Cryptid Whisperer and Extraterrestrial Liaison Officer. Now, though we are both experts in this field, we are considering offering you a position into our secret club. There is currently an opening for Grand Pooba of Otherworldly Oddities and Director of Party Planning. It's a dual position, so you'd actually be both. <clears throat> now, I will be frank. You were very impressed with your post suggesting a cryptid themed potluck dinner. And in general, we believe you have a really good vibe. But this does not mean you are automatically in the club. We must not give you special privileges and plan on conducting a fair and impartial interview. 
But um, <clears throat> before we begin, I do have a personal question, if you will allow it. I'll allow it. What is your favorite cryptid? <laughs> ah, the Megalodon. Fair answer. But nothing quite like my personal favorite, the Lovewind Frog. Do you know of any? Or do you know of it? It's um, a legendary humanoid frog from Ohio folklore. It inspired 2014's musical Hot Damn, It's the Loveland Frog. I've been trying to catch it ever since I learned of its existence at the Cincinnati Fringe Festival where I saw the musical Hot Damn, It's the Loveland Frog. That's a good one. I'd have to say though, Gilman, since Creature from the Black Lagoon was the first movie that inspired my research of cryptids. And um, that's a movie monster? We're talking about real life here? <laughs> uh, actually, fossils of fishmen have been found from the Devonian period in the Amazonian River. The government has suppressed this information to limit hysteria. Obviously, mm. it would blow the lid off of it way would. too many religions. A cinematographer by the name of Gabriel Figuera has detailed the chilling story of his friend who mysteriously disappeared in the Amazon while filming a documentary on said rumored population. Of fish people. He was never to be seen again. Sometimes you scare me. <laughs> um, have any of the remains been found? Not that I can find online. But it's no wonder. Their scales are practically bulletproof. And even then, they have fast regeneration on their side. Paired with their superhuman strength and top swim speed of 40 miles per hour. Goodness. <laughs> Good luck catching one. Very inspiring. I would like to discuss that topic further, but um, it must wait. We have an interview to, to um, say goodnight. And now, first and foremost, I will be testing your knowledge on cryptids, but that is second to passion. I can teach those who seek me out the ways of cryptozoology, but I cannot teach passion. Something to keep in mind. Let us begin. <clears throat> Question one. What is your stance on the theory that cryptids are actually ancient aliens in disguise? speaking in ancient hieroglyphics during an expedition. You are not fluent in ancient hieroglyphics? Have 
have secret societies? And if so, how would you go about infiltrating their exclusive club? Mm -hmm. Your plan did not involve invisible ink and or decoder rings. Quite the rookie move. A question for you. If you were a cryptid, which one would you be? And how would you evade capture by the government? Please feel free to describe your cryptid disguise and escape strategy. I understand that this is a two-part question, so please take your time. creativity, but I acknowledge that it can be difficult to answer since we aren't sure of all the mystical powers each cryptid could possibly have. I mean, it could completely change your trash strategy if invisibility was on the table. Would you not agree? Mm. In my opinion, you wouldn't need invisibility. I'd go for the elusive and mysterious of jackal. Course. This majestic creature with the antlers of a deer and the mischievous spirit of a rabbit. Anyway, to evade government capture, I'd rely on my unparalleled skills in camouflage, turning myself into a patch of ordinary looking shrubbery whenever Asians approach. As for my escape strategy. I'd have a network of underground burrows, complete with secret trap doors, interconnected tunnels, and a few false rabbit holes to keep them guessing, of course. That's a good one. Thank you for sharing. A question five. In our line of work, we encounter all sorts of bizarre phenomena. How do you feel about the possibility that cryptids are actually interdimensional beings? And have you ever tried opening a portal with a toaster and a jar of pickles? You have so much to learn, Padawan. <laughs> I assure you, it's very real.
question. How would you convince a skeptical audience that the moon landing was actually a covert mission to recruit Bigfoot as an intergalactic diplomat? You are unaware of that? <laughs> well, the government does cover it up well, but it's true. It all started when NASA realized that Bigfoot had unparalleled diplomatic skills. Listen up. If I was put on the spot and had all the necessary resources, I'd go for a documentary with dramatic reconstructions, interviews with alleged extraterrestrial beings, and of course, a soundtrack featuring Bigfoot's favorite moon themed song. Personally, I'd go for a 10 part series on the History Channel with Bigfoot as the narrator. I'd watch. It'd be like a, um, a tell all dramatic life story retelling. Mm. I, I do agree on the moon themed songs part, though. That's very good. It's very good. Um, next question. It's rumored that cryptids possess the ability to communicate through telepathy. If you were to receive a telepathic message from a cryptid, how would you respond? And what snacks would you bring to the interdimensional picnic they invited you to? Yes, that's right. Um, I do. I'm just an academic artist. I'm too interested in the shit. The, the, the palette is an artist. It's a stage. There is. No, you have to bring something that is not in the project. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. I believe that's a good choice. I, of course, would bring cheese sticks. Delicious. Easy to pack filled with protein. The most efficient snack. I would introduce them to Cool Ranch Doritos. Are you mad? That'd be far too spicy for their palate. We don't know that. While camping in the woodlands of the Pacific Northwest, I woke up to find my whole stash of Doritos and goldfish pilfered. It was Sasquatch, and I'm sure of it. I found his signature dark brown reddish hair. We may not all agree in our club, but we still respect each other's outlandish claims. I'm moving on. Question eight. In your cryptid adventures, have you ever considered the possibility that cryptids are the original creators of crop circles? moves would you use to communicate with them while well, standing on said flattened wheat? You do not know of any? No, this is fine. It's fine. Sasquatch is quite good at it. She may teach you if you ask nicely. A master, actually, of the craft. Once on my walkabout in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, I used it to communicate with the Jersey Devil that I came in peace. 
I wasn't able to get any video evidence. But it was a sight to see, nonetheless. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. A question nine. The Loch Ness Monster is said to have a flair for fashion. If you were to design a cryptid fashion line, what accessories would be essential for a fashionable yeti? Oh. Yes, fashion. Earmuffs. Matching scarf. And a mittens combo. That is a really good answer. Go ahead, go ahead with your follow-up. Do you think chupacabras would prefer leather or denim? Exactly, exactly. Thank you for your input. I told you. I just, I, I say we make samples of both and we let them choose. It's a vampiric creature. Black leather with a best with its back spines. I, yes, but denim is far more breathable. Ripped black jeans could give the same effect. But vampires wouldn't be caught dead in denim. Vampires are technically undead, so <laughs> yeah, they would. We'll table this topic for later. <clears throat> Question 10. If you were organizing a cryptid parade through the city, which cryptid would be the Grand Marshal? And more importantly, how would you convince the local authorities to temporarily close the streets for this historic event? Yes, to the best of your abilities, please go ahead, go on. Was a suitable answer. Very good. I could see him as the Grand Marshal. Yes, yes. Anything to add? I have no notes. Mothman. So we agree. That's an excellent answer. Right. A question eleven. In the realm of cryptid conspiracies, some believe that cryptids are actually time travelers. If you encountered a cryptid offering to take you on a time traveling adventure, per se, what historical period would you choose and why? Any 
it's difficult to choose, yes, I agree. choose the roaring 20s. I've always been fascinated by the flapper era. And I think introducing a cryptid to the glitz and glamour would be a once in a lifetime experience. Hmm. Yes. Surprising coming from you, but yes, a once in a lifetime experience indeed. I can imagine the Loveland frog really shining with the top hat and little cane. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Just imagine. I questioned off, right? Many cryptids are believed to have shape-shifting abilities. Some even shifting to appear more human. Some have tried integrating into our society. What sorts of tests would you conduct to check if someone was, in fact, a cryptid in disguise? Right, silver chains. I'd say. But what you failed to mention is that most cryptids, due to their solitary nature, are photophobic. They fear the light. Part of our interview is also making sure that you are in fact not a cryptid shapeshifter sent to find out what we know about your secret oh, society. Your otherworldly charisma and charm is very suspicious. Much agreed. Do you consent to a brief light exam? Thank you. I will conduct that now. <clears throat> Please take a look into the light. Look straight at me, please. How does it feel to be examined with such a bright light? Do you feel your skin searing at all? Please continue to look right at me. Do you feel your skin searing? Right. Okay. Understood. Are you getting intense uh, feelings of wanting to run and hide? Or the feeling of maybe crawling into a hole away from the light? Now you don't have to look right into the light, but I am doing a test to see if your skin starts to smoke. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. <clears throat> Did you see? We 
Looking can include that you are not a cryptid in disguise. Congratulations, you have passed. We must now confirm. One moment. We've made our decision. <clears throat> and you are in. Congratulations, you are our new Grand Pooba of Otherworldly Bodies and Director of Party Planning. We are excited to have you aboard. Yes, indeed. I will be sure to give you mod privileges on Reddit. And we will need to take a picture for your club member identification, if you do not mind. Say cheese! Now, if by any chance there is a criminal belief that one of our members has been taken over by a cricket, either by mind control or replaced by a shapeshifter, we will go into code ORANGE. At that time, we will have the accused member share a personal anecdote or fact that only we would know. <clears throat> if it's a who done it situation, and we are not sure who is compromised, we move on to code YELLOW in which we will all undergo a series of tests similar to and including the light exam. All of this information will be detailed in the booklet I will provide you with here upon your departure. I ask that you familiarize yourself with our practices and, in the very least, you memorize the secret handshake. Did I miss anything? Um, yeah, um, I'll need you to send me your list of snack preferences for yes. our future meetings. Ideally, you can just, like, tell Amber um, on the way out. My mom, the woman upstairs who greeted you. Um, <clears throat> cryptid culinary specialist. Part of the club. Cryptid culinary specialist. Um, all right. I will send you a message in your DMs detailing the date of our next meeting. Please, use the secret decoder ring tucked in your booklet as the cipher. Guard it with your life. In the event that such member loses their ring, we will go immediately on the code orange. I think I've made myself clear. Yes, well then, here you are. And you are free to go. We are looking forward to seeing you at our next meeting. Good night. Good night. And say goodbye to Deborah on the way. She really likes when she's included. <laughs>